In this example, we're going to try to find the Taylor polynomial for the sine function of degree 4 that is centered at pi over 2. So this is going to be a degree 4 polynomial that bends and turns like a trig function that will approximate the sine curve. And the approximations will be best around pi over 2. That's what it means to be centered at pi over 2. So the big thing you have to, to remember is the formula for Taylor polynomials. So if you don't already have this uh, memorized, make sure to commit this to memory because it'll be very important for your test and whatnot. And there's some patterns here, obviously, that you'll notice that, that can help you with memorizing this guy. So uh, basically what we have is uh, a bunch of uses for f. We have f, f prime, f double prime, f triple prime, and we're going to use this sine function as our f and our center is at pi over 2 that's the c in case that's not clear pi over 2 is our our value for c we're going to find all these necessary things and stick them in and there's going to be our answer so because i noticed that i not only need f not, i don't know, um, just need sine i also need uh, the derivative of sine and the second and the third and the fourth derivative what we typically do to begin these problems is somewhere on some scratch paper we will go find all of those things and then we'll use this information in our answer so sine x is f and the derivative of sine is cosine the second derivative is negative sine the third derivative is negative cosine and the fourth derivative is back to sine x again so here's all the derivatives that I'll need in my degree 4 polynomial. If it was degree 5 polynomial, I'd have to keep taking derivatives, of course. Right now, in addition to knowing what these derivatives are, now I actually have to do something with them. I have to evaluate these guys at the center, right? In this case, pi over 2. So these guys are of no use to me. These are not the things I'll be plugging in the Taylor polynomial. I actually have to evaluate them at the center first. Because uh, you notice in the formula here, it doesn't say f of x, it says f of c, right? And f prime at c, and the nth derivative at c, where c is pi over 2. All right, so just be aware of that. All right, so what, what is this guy evaluated at pi over 2? Uh, well, let, let's see here. Sine of pi over 2, if you just think about your unit circle, sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0 negative sine at pi over 2 would make negative 1, negative cosine at pi over 2 would make 0, and sine at pi over 2 again is 1. So these are going to be very helpful for my final answer. This is f of c, f prime at c, f double prime at c. They go 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. All right, now one thing that I find interesting before I flip to, to the um, previous page is that these guys are 0, so the term that has the first and third derivatives will be annihilated. They won't be there because you'll be multiplying those terms times zero. But I'll make that clear in just a moment. Okay, so anyway, let's get to our answer. We're, we're ready to write it down now. All right, so here we go. We'd have P sub 4. This is a polynomial of degree 4. That's going to approximate the sine function. Will be... Um, f of c, in other words, sine of pi over 2 that we saw on the previous page, that was 1. And then plus the derivative, uh, which was 0, by the way, times x minus pi over 2. So this guy's gone. He's 0. Right? This particular term is 0. Uh, plus f double prime at c, which was negative 1 over 2 factorial. I'm just following this generic pattern here times x minus c, in other words, x minus pi over 2 squared, right, plus f triple prime at 0, but remember, f triple prime was 0, so that, that term's gone. Uh, and then the next term would be the fourth derivative at pi over 2, which is 1 over 4 factorial times x minus pi over 2 to the fourth power, right? So this is basically our answer. Uh, if you wanted to clean this guy up just a little bit, there's not really a whole lot you could do, but if you wanted to turn the factorials into actual numbers, you could say 
x minus pi over 2 squared all over 2. Sorry, I'm kind of running out of space there. Plus x minus pi over 2 to the 4th over 24. All right, 24, that's 4 factorial. Uh, sorry, that's kind of messy, a little sloppy. But, uh, but this would be your polynomial of degree 4. And the amazing thing about this guy, if you graph this polynomial, which has nothing trig about it, there is no sines, there is no cosines, uh, etc., this guy will follow the sine curve. It's pretty amazing that we can find a polynomial that follows trig functions. All right, so to illustrate this, I'm going to actually graph both of these in the calculator just to kind of convince you that these work out pretty well. I uh, went ahead and took the liberty of uh, typing in sine x as well as the polynomial. You can kind of see it here. 1 minus x minus pi over 2 squared over 2, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm ready to graph. I went ahead and, and took care of most of that legwork. But here's the sine curve. And here's a polynomial, right? Now take a look at this guy. Look at where the approximations are best. Look at my cursor. Um, this degree 4 polynomial, doesn't it seem that the approximations are best right about here? Looks like it's following the curve exactly for sine x right about here. Now as you go to the left or go to the right, what happens as you move to the left? Well, the approximation leaves the sine curve. The polynomial doesn't approximate sine that well way over here, but that's okay. Uh, if you wanted a good approximation over here, we should have centered it uh, appropriately. Uh, now let me just zoom out a little bit to help you see this a little bit better. I'll tell you what, let me make the x max just a little bigger and I'll also make the y max a, a little bigger as well. Okay, let me graph this again. So there's the sine curve and now you can kind of see this guy a little bit better now that I've zoomed out. This is a degree 4 polynomial but, but you'll notice though just the way he's constructed he comes down and in a short period of time, over a short period of time, approximates the sine function phenomenally well. Uh, so it's, it's just very, very impressive that we can do this. Now, what if you wanted it more accurate for longer? Well, then we would need to tack on additional terms. And so if you look here with this Taylor polynomial, we have it currently up to degree four, but we could tack on additional terms and it would follow the sine curve for longer. Now, I'll tell you what, here, here's, here's the last thing I'll close with. How, how about this? What if, I, what if I took out some of these terms? All right, what if I took out that degree 4 term and just turned it into, I guess the term before would make it a quadratic. What, what would happen, do you think? Well, what, what I think would happen is the approximation would not be quite as good if you took off that last term. So here we've reduced it to a quadratic. It's still an approximation. But this time when I graph it, take a look at what happens. Now it's a parabola, and it still approximates the sine curve fairly well around pi over 2. But notice how much more quickly it leaves the sine curve because it's only a quadratic. So the more terms that you have in your Taylor polynomial, the longer or the better the approximation is. And the less terms, the worse the approximation is. So anyway, ho hopefully that Taylor polynomial example helps you understand Taylor polynomials just a little bit better.